Hi there. So, I want to talk about finding one's purpose. No, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Oscars. <laughs> I want to talk about dissatisfaction. I want to talk about finding a spin on a story that actually serves you. Right? That actually serves you. Now, what's really interesting about the Oscars that nobody seems to have noticed, right, is that, oh my gosh, Idris Elba, he was snubbed, okay, for Beast of No Nation, okay, great. Why did that happen? Oh, because they ignored people of color. No, no. Let's reframe that story for just a minute. Kerry Fujinaka is an independent filmmaker, director. He had a script, he shopped it, he asked people for money because he wanted to tell this story about child soldiers, right? He didn't go to the studio. He raised the money on his own. I know. The script came through my production company. It was pitched to us. It was an independent artist saying, I'm gonna work outside the studio system and make something, right? Because I think it's important. Not because Hollywood wants to make it, Hollywood wants to make it, not because it's gonna make a bunch of money, not because it's gonna get me an Oscar nomination. He made it because it was a story that he had to tell by any means necessary, right? When a filmmaker who's paid lots of money, like Kerry Fujinaka usually is for action flicks, decides to tell a story straight from his heart, from his sense of purpose as an artist, because that's a story that must be told right, by any means necessary. He's not doing that for an Oscar. He's doing that for his humanism. He's doing that for his artistic sensibility. He's doing that to leave the world a little bit more informed and compassionate, right? That's it, right? So first of all, he wasn't making a film to get an Oscar. That's first of all. Uh, when you make a film about child soldiers, well, you don't ex really expect to get an Oscar. <laughs> it's kind of hard, dark subject matter. But something really amazing and rare happened when with Beast of No Nation. Something that has never happened before. Usually, this is how films work, right? Films go to film festivals, you know, a filmmaker scratches, bites, raises the money, does it on a shoestring, gets it into a festival, and then Sony or Focus or Fox or whoever, some big studio buys it. They then pay the filmmaker uh, one eighth of what it costs to make the movie and go, bye bye it's our movie now and we have the rights for it for this amount of time. We're going to air it as much as we want on our network. We're going to show it in movie theaters and we're going to take home all the money and we're going to do the marketing, but we're also going to take home all the money and you may or may not see your money and it's independent film. They don't make any money. Okay, great. But because it'll be an independent film that was purchased at Sundance or Tribeca or All Access or Toronto or Cannes or South by Southwest, because it was there, uh, it'll catapult your career and you'll get some other deal, but you're not making any money on this thing. Well, what about the artist who's not interested in getting another deal? What about the artist who was understood, my purpose is to tell a particular kind of story. That's why I was put here. When you're working from a place of why am I here and this is what I'm supposed to be doing, all that other stuff falls away. All that what I shoulda, woulda, coulda, houlda got falls away. And what you have is the truth and tenacity of your commitment to why I am here. And the story gets told beautifully as a result, right? Well, something magical happened because one artist said, I'm telling this story by any means necessary. Netflix, who had never released a film on their own, a full feature film, a Hollywood film, essentially, of that budget, $6 million budget. Now, instead of him going to Sundance and maybe IFC coming back and saying, oh, we'll, we'll buy the film for you. Here's $400,000. Buy. I know you raised $6 million for it and you're not going to make any money off of it, but here you go. And we're going to make the film. Not only did Netflix come to Mr. Fujinaka with an offer, they doubled his budget. For the first time in history, an artist got to bypass the studio system, make money on their film before the film made money. That is unprecedented. 
what does that mean? And it's a little frustrating watching social media for people like, I feel so wrong. And here we are in the midst of something amazing. An independent artist bypassed the Hollywood studio system and made not only what they, what they raised to make the film, but they made a profit, a 100% profit. You know who usually makes the 100% profit? The corporation, Hollywood, the people who give out the Oscars, right? So this is what's interesting to me about the hoopla over the Oscars. It's a need to go outside yourself and get a kind of attention, a kind of award that what's it gonna do for you? It's no guarantee that it's going to make you more money. And without the ability to make more money, you can't make more stories that create satisfaction for you as an artist. You can't do what you were put here to do. The Oscars don't guarantee that, not anymore. Not in a world where an artist can decide why I'm making art, begin to tell a story because that's why they're here, and make a living. That's why Beast of Donations got no Oscar. Now, I'm not, I'm not speaking to all that other diversity stuff. I don't care about that. I work for me. You should be too. Your sense of what is important, what is worthy, what is good in the world, if it does not start from within, you are always going to be dissatisfied. So the question begins, why are you doing what you do? If you're a lawyer, if you're an actor, if you're a teacher, why are you here? Are you doing it to get a paycheck? So you can grow old and plan a retirement? I'm not planning on retiring, I'll just start a new career. I'll go back to school and get a PhD. Screw it, I'll become a ballet dancer. I'm looking forward to my life in the moment. I'm not planning it out so it can be organized and safe, right? I'm staying in the moment and being grateful for the moment and focusing on the kind of life that you shape that is responding to what you need right now. That's what creates satisfaction. That's, cre that's what creates happiness. That's what the gratitude movements are about. That's what the vulnerability movement is about. What's going on with you right here, right now? Look inside and find out. Right? And if there's dis dissatisfaction, generally internal dissatisfaction and complaint about what the outside world is doing to you is about you not acknowledging that there's something inside that you want to do for you and you're not doing it because you're supposed to look for a film that's going to get an Oscar and that will catapult your career. Well, guess what? In that formula of shoulds, it doesn't even work anymore in our industry. <laughs> you know why? Because for the first time in history, you can actually go out there with your own freaking camera and find the story in your heart that wants to be told and write a book about it or shoot it yourself and put it on YouTube or put it on the internet or shop at it or do a, a, a fundraising campaign and make it yourself. The internet has actually given us the power to go after our dreams. And instead of doing that, we're focusing on the shoulds that we have no power over right? A corporate structure that's willy nilly and looks at the account books to figure out who's popular, who's making money, who's trending, blah, 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 blah. Satisfaction comes from the things within your control that you are fully, fully pursuing. And that is what this series of videos with this free class coming up about how to accomplish goals in 26, right? 2016. Goals that you'll actually accomplish, <laughs> not the ones you just talk about, right? I've been thinking about this since before the new year as I sat there sniffling going, oh, okay, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, I want to go for another audition or something like this. And I was like, well, this ennui that I'm feeling, this dissatisfaction, I turn on the TV, everything's dark, or it's everybody complaining, or it's every something really bad happening in the world, right? Legitimately bad, right? Black lives actually matter. Well, right now, not so much. That's bad. <laughs> That's really bad. Right, especially for me, because I'm black. But, <laughs> right, the other 90% of the time, what can I be doing about my life? That bad thing is not happening to me. The other 95, 96, 97% of the time. The rest of the time, my mind is free to be thankful for what I have, and then to start saying, huh, what is it that I have? What is it that I do every day? How does it make me feel? How do I feel when I leave work? 
How would I, how do I feel when I look at my website? How do I feel when I look, go back and look at my credits for, on IMDb to see how much I've gotten done in the last year and a half as an artist? How do I feel when I look at a script or a blog post that I wrote? How do I feel about the life that I'm actually living? And if that isn't fantastic, then that's on me to change it, right? And when you're feeling dissatisfaction, this is very much like the email that I sent out. And if you'd like me to send it to you, I'll, ha I'll gladly send it to you. I sent out an email about 16 things that feel wrong, that are a clear indicator that you're on the right track to change, to something amazing happening to you. Dissatisfaction is one of those things. Finally knowing things that you've been pretending you don't know. Right? Finding that things that you held as valuable are no longer valuable. These are all things that are coming up for you that are telling you it's time for you to start doing things that make you feel good, that make you feel right in the world, that make you feel, as John Irving uh, writes in the Cider House Rules, of use. I remember the first time I ever read that. You know, his main character was like, I want to do something. I want to be of use to the world. Marion Wright Edelman, I interned for the Children's Defense Fund in college, and then I worked running freedom schools as a community organizer for five years. Um, I had a real job on Capitol Hill and in the hood of Southeast DC. And she was, you know, the iconic founder of the Children's Defense Fund. But she would always say, service is the rent you pay for living. And there's something about service. Whatever, if you are a writer, you are lending your service to the story, right? And story, theater, particularly story that's meant to be performed, is from the Greeks. It's about giving your audience a moment to feel catharsis, to feel empathy, right? To feel compassion for the plight of another human being. That's why theater is so important. That's why storytelling is so important. It is a vehicle for empathy. It's a vehicle for compassion. That's an actual way of serving the world. So if the story isn't doing that, why are we watching it? That's part of the ennui that we're feeling, the, the detachment, the darkness, the nothing's working out, something's not right. And it's good that we're all feeling that because it means we're on the verge of something amazing. We're on the verge of change. We're on the verge of actually pursuing a lifestyle that feels good to me, you, and everybody around us. And that starts inside, right? I love that Daniel Laporte is an amazing coach. I don't purport to be a life coach. I just purport to be like this artist who's making up her life as she goes. And the central unit of my life is joy, right? And to be of use and purposeful, right? I've always been that way. And when I'm not, I'm unhappy. I'm active on purpose, right? What is your purpose? Why are you here? Big, huge question. Big, huge question. And I'm gonna present in these next three videos some more questions, some more exercises, some more things to think about that'll help us get closer to some of these questions, right? Some answers that are satisfying. The first step is that you actually sat here and watched this video. <laughs> Cause you're like, okay, she got, she got onto something. I don't know what it is. She may not either, but you know, I think it's something we need to air out and get out there. Because I want people talking. I want people making lives that feel like the life they're supposed to be making. I figured out how to do it. And I stumbled around in the dark a long time. I made a lot of mistakes. Holla. Right? I was five years late to everything. I was five years late to college. <laughs> I went to college for the first time and then I flunked out. And five years later, I went back to Vassar College and I finished. I'm the queen of not getting it right. And then going, oh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> So instead of you stumbling around in the dark or making the same mistakes I did, I'm a wisdom coach, let's say that. I'm a soothsayer. I'm a healer woman, like my great grandmother. I give the gift of my failures to you as a place to find some joy and some success so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's what I offer. So our first question, which I'd like you to spend some time every morning Find a quiet place, do your morning pages, and write freehand. If you want to bitch and moan for the first three pages, do it. Just do it every day. Don't stop. And then at the end of that week, I want you to go through those pages. What are you talking about constantly? Is it your job? Is it your boss? 
Is it the crappy auditions? Is it your landlady? What are you talking about constantly? And how do you feel about the thing that you're talking about? See, because the clues to who you want to be and the life you want to be living and what you want to be doing are all there. They're screaming at you. You're actually just not giving them a place to get through the mire and the noise to be heard. The mire and the noise is the busyness of your life, the running hither, thither and yon, the spending hours and hours on social media talking about the ask of some shit you can't do nothing about, right? That's noise. The morning pages force you to turn off the noise, right? And really start getting closer to things that give you joy. And when you first start the morning pages, some of the things you're going to find is that you bitch and moan, right? You have to dump out all of that, right? To make space for the goodness. So write three pages. They ain't got to be a gratitude list at first. Just write every day. Don't quit on yourself every day. I promise you at the end of a week, you will have a list of things that one, need to go unequivocally and it'll be right there in paper. Two, that you absolutely love and you're not doing. Those are the keys. The third piece is dream writing. Can't remember your dream? Make a note. There's a great app called Sleep Better. I love it. It, it monitors your sleep while you're sleeping and it tells you how much deep sleep, how much you know light sleep, how much you were awake and the quality of your sleep. And then at the end, when you open it in the morning, it says, how do you feel and what were your dreams like? I always write down my dreams because your dreams are your soul going, you see all that bullshit that you're wasting your time with? Where you're supposed to be is here writing, telling stories. What you're supposed to do is quit that job that's keeping you from your dream of staying at home and writing a book. Right? Your dreams are your subconscious screaming at you. You have to give them a room to be heard. That's where the morning pages are. I want you to do that for seven days and come back and tell me how it went. I want you to ask me questions. I'm telling you, this shizazzle works. When I come back in the next video, we're going to take it from the next step of how you start to analyze what keeps coming up in those morning pages and where the clues are to start getting some answers to these questions about what makes you happy and what you feel good at. Because once you figure that out, all this dissatisfaction about what's going on in the world, it won't phase you because you're too busy living the gorgeous life that you truly want, your heart's desire. Create some space. Your heart is struggling to be heard, to be seen. Get it on a break. I'll be back. Thanks.